And welcome back once again to www.learnquickbooksfree.com Lesson C uh, In this next segment, uh, we're going to be uh, discussing receivables Which uh, is basically income or monies coming into the company I'm going to be showing you how to set up uh, new customers How to create invoices, uh, sales receipts, how to record deposits uh, And even cool little features such as memorized transactions In this next segment, we're going to be talking about receivables and income. Uh, as you can see, we got the home tab over here. I'm going to X out of it over here again. If you ever want to get that back, all you got to do is hit the home button, by the way. The main area that we're going to be dealing with for receivables and income is under customers. So we're going to hit customers. And this is going to be some of the areas that we're going to be showing you right now. Uh, banking is another area that you can be using a little bit and I'm going to show you that later on. So let's go to customer and then we're going to go to customer center which is basically the same idea as vendor center. Over here you can take a look at all the clients that you have and add it manually. So let's go ahead and add a new customer right now and we're going to call it customer one. Okay, Same rule applies. It could be a business name, corporate name, a individual name. Uh, so we're going to call this uh, uh, Mr. <laughs> customer. Okay, and as you can see, it uh, brings it down to the bill to. So for the bill to, we're going to call it 555 billing address at Los Angeles, California, 901. Now, if your ship to address is the same as billing, uh, then you can just basically do copy. But if it's not, uh, then you can basically customize it over here. Now we can have your bill to and your ship to. Okay. Uh, for 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 the actual customer, if they have a different address. So I'm sorry, not your address, but if the customer has a different address. A uh, phone number, you can put the phone number. Email address is great. That way you can send them invoices. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put our email address for now. Okay. Additional info. Uh, so this is where uh, you can, you know, reference it as a wholesale, retail. I don't really mess with this a whole lot. Terms. If you're going to give your client some terms, so it's basically the same thing as what we talked about in the vendor setup. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and say this client's got net 30, 30 days to pay you. Okay. Uh, payment info. You can put. Uh, account number, credit limit, you can put a lot of different stuff, credit card number, um, this is all optional but a, a lot of times uh, I keep this kind of a little bit more simple and um, I don't really put a whole lot in this over here. So we're going to get hit OK right now. So there we go, we got customer 1. Let's go ahead and add customer 2. Customer 2. And then we're not going to put any... Um, first name last name and there we go street 2 and I'm just making it very simple and making it Los Angeles again and I'm gonna go ahead and put the email address email is one field that I really do like putting a lot in phone numbers as well uh, as you can see you get to see all this information right over here so it really does help out okay so this is basically one way of adding new clients, new customers. Another way of doing it is by actually entering a transaction. So we're going to go under customers and we're going to go ahead and let's create an invoice. So there's two ways of bringing in income. You can either create an invoice or enter sales receipt. I'm going to tell you basically the difference. Invoice you're going to use if you're not receiving the payment either in full right away or you're just not receiving the payment right away. So if you're going to have uh, something that you're selling to someone and they're not paying you right away, whether it's the full amount or part of the amount, you want to create an invoice. On the other hand, if you sell something on the spot and you got paid on the spot and there's no balance left, you're going to do enter sales receipt 
You can still do create an invoice, uh, but now it's a two-step process under create invoice, where under sales receipt, it's a one-step process. So if you want to make things faster, if payment is made in full, let's do enter sales receipt. And you know what? Let's do that first. So um, before you, you receive a payment, we recommend completing the payment methods interview. Would you like to do this now? I'm going to hit no, just because I already know the process. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So under customer job, this is where you basically get to pick uh, the you know the customer or the customer job. Okay, customer uh, customer job. Let's go over here. As you see, project A is the customer is the actual job that we created. So what this basically means is that if you have a customer such as customer one, but you have uh, two things uh, that you sold to them that you're going to get money on, and you want to separate these two jobs as they were two projects you can create two separate jobs so I'm going to show you how that's done I'm going to hit add new and customer name is going to be uh, job A okay or actually I'm going to go to customer center and under customer one I'm going to do add a new job so as you can see it's going to pull up his information and I'm going to write job A and I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to go ahead and do new add job once again and I'm going to do job B so as you can see under customer 1 we have job A or job B customer 1 will subtotal everything between job A and job B so let's see how that works I'm gonna X out of over here back to sales receipt and we're gonna do job A okay I don't really put anything under class personally so I'm gonna forward that and as you can see over here when I scroll over uh, it's gonna say template and it's gonna have custom sales templates so you can actually design different templates before you even proceed. So let's actually go and see how we design a template. A template is going to be under list and then template. And then over here, as you can see, we have custom sales receipt. We can either add a new template or we can revise this. I'm going to go ahead and actually just double click this. And I'm just going to go ahead and revise this right here okay so as you can see uh, once you're in here uh, you can change a few different things you can add a fax number if you want uh, you can add a phone number email address website address as you can see it's adding different fields down below so at any given time you can hit print preview and see if this is the way you want it to look uh, at the same time uh, whether you have all the fields that you want in there okay so uh, let's go ahead and hit manage we're gonna double click this actually we're, we're back to over here and what I want to go ahead and do is well I actually want to go ahead and do additional customizations there we go so once you're in here you're gonna hit this button down here called additional customization and under here is where you get to choose the name of the fields and whether you just want it to show on the screen or also print or both okay so you can actually have some things that show on the screen and don't print to the uh, you know when you print it out to show the customer okay so it's really up to you on how you want to customize it so we're gonna keep it as sales receipt for default title uh, date we're gonna keep the date sale sold to ship to so in this case it doesn't have it so let's say if we want to show the ship to and print it out we're gonna check these two sections over here and as you can see it just popped up on the right hand side okay uh, due date uh, rep there's a lot of different things that you can put account number so we're gonna go ahead and put the account number um, 
You can put ship date. Remember, only put what you feel you're going to use and what you want to show. So that was for header. Then we're going to go to columns and basically it's the same idea. You get to put uh, description, quantity, rate, amounts. That's all in this section over here. I also personally like to put item to show the actual item. So we're going to do that right now as well. Uh, footer, you can customize that. You know, same thing as print. So you can go through these sections and pretty much customize uh, you know, what, what you want it to look like and how you want it to print. So we're going to hit OK right now. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to X out over here. And there you go. I just went ahead and updated my template a little bit. And now we can you know, keep working. So you can make different templates for different reasons. Uh, I like to keep it simple. I like to use one template for all unless there's a real reason of why I need to do separate templates okay so the date if it's your first one I wouldn't recommend starting it on one it looks like you just started business you don't want to do that so you can do it on 1001 you can do 10,001 whatever works for you 500 it really doesn't matter okay so we're gonna do 1001 okay and over here for check number uh, check number I use for a few different reasons. I can either use for an actual check number if I got a check or if I ran a credit card number I would put the authorization number over here. So let's pretend that we ran a um, credit card on this one and the authorization number was 555XYZ whatever that may be okay and then what I like to do I like to put a dash and I like to put V for Visa, A for Amex, D for Discover, M for MasterCard. And then for payment method, instead of putting Visa, okay, the reason why I don't put Visa under payment method is because you may have multiple merchant accounts. So in this case, this is where under payment method, it could, once again, it could have been a check for check. They already have credit cards over here. You could do that if you want to. Uh, cash is if you got cash, okay, but personally, uh, like I said, I like to go ahead and uh, put, uh, you know, merchant one. So I'm going to go ahead and put merchant dash one. As you can see, if I hit tab, it's going to say, it's not in the payments method list. Would you like to set it up? Yes, I'd like to set it up. And this is going to go ahead and be, so it's called merchant one and uh, cash payment type. Payment type is going to be okay other credit card and I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and then there you go uh, so now for the item uh, this is basically what you sold so we're gonna go ahead and write item if we scroll down right now we see we have no new items so you can hit add new let's say this is gonna be a non inventory part so right now we're just selling a service for example and we're gonna call it book keeping services and we're not going to put it under a sub item uh, and then for description once again you could put whatever you want I'm just gonna write book keeping services price I'm just gonna leave it blank because there's no set price for that I'm not a big fan of putting price over here uh, unless you definitely have an inventory uh, system uh, just because different people will get billed differently and so on so I like to leave this a uh, blank um, personally but you could do whatever you want uh, for accounts uh, this is where you would have to select something under income so for bookkeeping services let's say I'm gonna put that under accounting service income and I'm gonna hit OK personally I, I actually like to uh, usually put that under the same name so if I put bookkeeping I will put bookkeeping on the other end but for right now it really doesn't matter and there you go so for quantity let's say I worked uh, 25 hours at $25 an hour okay and there you go I brought a subtotal up okay and that concludes the first part of this lesson uh, visit our website to see the second part of this lesson at www.learnquickbooksfree.com